Alright guys, I promised you guys a hell run and here it is, but I'm quite disappointed in this run because for whatever reason, Fraps just, just went belly up on me and halfway through the Olmack fight and it just lagged so bad I had to stop recording in many cases. And in hell it started doing it, so I apologize for the lag. I might have to do another one, just let me know what you guys think. But the basic strategies still remain the same. You can, I can pretty much get them across even with some of the lag, but... I don't know what happened with Fraps. It just it just went crazy on me, so I apologize ahead of time. Sorry. All right. When you first start in the mines, try to get as much money as you can in the early levels. You do not want to anger the shopkeepers just yet. My the way I like to do this to get to hell consistently. This works for me very very consistently too. Like. I don't deal with the shopkeepers in the mines. Now, if they have, like, maybe something very tempting like a jetpack or something or a buttload of bombs, then maybe, you know, you don't want to deal with the shopkeepers as much as you don't have to. I mean, if you can prevent uh, dealing with the shopkeepers early on, that's a good thing. But most cases, just try to get a lot of money. As you can see, I'm trying to get a lot of money here in the first couple of levels. Actually, this is still the first level. Always go for crates. I try to rescue damsels early on. I don't. I never know if I'm going to get Kapala or not, so you just have to um, plan ahead. And if you don't get the Kapala, In the second level, make sure you start looking all throughout the mines because you don't know where the key is going to be in the chest. Uh, always, That's your main goal in the mines is to get the key in the chest, so don't forget what your main goal is. But at the same time, make sure you, like I said, uh, bombs in this game are very, very important. You want bombs more than anything else. So... If you see a shopkeeper early on that's selling even a three-pack bomb, buy it. Buy as many bombs as you can get. Trust me on this one, you will want bombs. Bombs are the most valuable item in the game overall. That's something you really want to have all the time. Bombs and ropes, because you never know if you're going to get climbing gloves. The thing about these runs is you have to plan ahead as if you don't... You don't know what you're going to get since the game is random. So you have to plan like you don't know what you're gonna get so you don't know if you're gonna get gloves so get a lot of ropes you don't know if you're going to get you know a certain item plan ahead for the next best thing bombs can always get you out of a tight situation One item you never will pass up is the compass. Always buy the compass. I don't care. If you gotta go get money to get it, go get it. The compass is an extremely valuable tool in this game. I actually tried to get climbing gloves here, but didn't have the money, so I get the next best thing. Ro uh, bombs, like I say, if you can't afford one item, get the next best thing. Bombs are always a good option.
Now, if you spot either the key or the chest, you know you're gonna have to. You're you're in the right level. <laughs> it's always a good feeling to see one or the other, so you know you haven't bypassed it in one of the previous levels. So either get the key or the chest doesn't matter, but you gotta be looking left all the way to the right. I like to work my way as much as I can, for, and then look down to see if it if it might be somewhere off to the right or left. You just have to look very carefully. One thing you'll notice about my playing in this style in this run is I'm very patient. I ha you have to be patient in Spelunky sometimes. You have to be very patient as if you rush too much you, you might you're liable to make mistakes. So you'll notice a lot of times I take my time because I just don't want to make a stupid mistake. Now, even in the first level, you can possibly get the black market in this level. So, one thing you're going to have to be in the jungle as soon as you enter, it, even the first level, is to be very, very thorough. Go left, go right, go up, go down, go everywhere you can. As long as you search every area very diligently, then you can rest assured that you, you're okay and you didn't possibly bypass the black market. Sometimes, however, they can put the damn black market in areas which just boggle my head. I, I just can't believe where they would put it sometimes, but you have to be very, very thorough in this first level, even the first level of this jungle. Oh, you know you get this blue light. We're in good shape. Now, I want to talk to you about how to deal with the black market. This is very, very important. And I suggest y'all don't deviate from what I do here. This works very consistently for me, so I don't get killed very much in the black market. Make sure you do exactly what I do here. First, observe the area, what, what you're dealing with. It, hopefully, you have sticky bombs because th it's going to be crucial for this strategy. Whatever money you have left... Buy bombs. Whatever the shopkeeper's bombs, buy as many as you can. Now, head to the very top level. Don't go to the bottom. Don't go to the middle. Go to the top. And, 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 and be very careful. Throw rope. Be careful here. Stay to the top as much as you can. Now, the, the shopkeepers, they're just not a very coordinated uh, group, man. They'll just kill themselves and kill each other. I mean... It's really funny to watch sometimes, just to watch the chaos unfold. But you still have to be very careful. Know where they are and what they're doing. Like, they're killing each other down there, so I'm just going to let them battle it out. Now, sometimes you have to create uh, a landscape that you can work around. Like, I had to blow up that little portion... So I could throw, I have a good lane to throw a bomb here. Even though it didn't kill anything. But you sometimes you have to do that. Try to get a shotgun as early as you can. 
and take out this guy at the bottom with a sticky throw. The pitcher's mitt helps if you have it. I always try to get the pitcher's mitt. I didn't have it at the, at the moment, but now I, I have it now. If the, if the, if the uh, damsel did survive the chaos, then uh, try to save her. Uh, because you don't want to... You want to get as much health as you can before you commit suicide, just because you want to get to the mines and get hit a few times. I mean, not the mines, the uh, ice caves. You would hate to get to the ice caves and get hit before the blue head appears and uh, not get it, so... I know you have to eventually commit suicide, but... So don't get a whole lot of hearts, but just get get health when you can, especially if you don't have Kapala. Take care when using the shotgun, especially, you see how I, I'm going to throw a bomb here? I have to create a little bit of space here because the, the, the kickback on the shotgun can really hurt you sometimes, especially if you're standing on top of a tiki trap and you're going to shoot it. it you're going to get a little bit of kickback. So I'm accounting for that by creating a little bit of space. Sometimes it's worth using a bomb just to create space. Be very, very careful with shopkeepers. You have to remember, you've angered them now. You have to deal with them in every exit. So, there's like a little bit of uh, leeway on, your, on the site that they can see you. Like, you could see, I just, he could have saw me right there. But the further you are away from the shopkeeper, the better. And your shotgun will always hit them, even if you can't see them. Always take this into account. Slow and steady wins the race here in the ice caves. As long as you're very, very careful and plan very, very carefully, you'll, you'll make it no problem. Especially if you have a compass. If you have a compass, it's going to be really easy for you. Or a cape even. A cape and a compass combination are just almost laughable. Now, once you locate the head, it can appear in the second level. See, it was kind of early. I was kind of surprised. You never know when it's going to appear. And you have to give up your shotgun, unfortunately. Make... Don't go too quickly. Don't hit the right bumper right away. I have actually entered this head without getting the helmet. Imagine what an epic fail that was. Yes, don't do it. Make sure you finish the animation and it falls on your head. Rescue damsels when you can, because now that you've committed suicide, uh, try to get as much health as possible. Had quite a bit of trouble with this shopkeeper. I just couldn't get him right away. Oh, no, not this one. The next one. The next one gave me a lot of trouble. I, I was very careful with the last one.
notice how I'm getting a little scared here. Sometimes it's okay. You, you gotta observe the situation. I'm thinking, hmm, this ain't a good idea. I'm too close to hell here, but let's not make a mistake. Work my way around. Always have to analyze the situation, like I said before in my other video, uh, the temple video. Look at what's around you. Look at what could happen. I saw that little jump thing there, that little jump trap. Well, not really a trap, but I thought, well, what if I get hit by that and he jumps up and shoots me? No, I'm not going to let that happen. So just, you have to be very careful sometimes. Just do what it takes to survive. And they'll run off like idiots. Uh, the ice caves are quite easy to deal with the shopkeepers. But don't take it for granted. Never for granted. Oh, how convenient that Anubis spawned right here where I could deal with him. Now, here's the situation. I got very lucky here. I had to think about this for a long time. Look at where the staff is. It's right on top of those crushers. It will crush it. I'm pretty sure that that will crush it. So, it, you know, I could have jumped forward and it would have been game over for me because the staff would have been crushed. You have to do what it takes. I used a bomb. I had no choice. What might have happened is it could have been crushed. You have to think like this when you're playing the game. Because you just never know what the hell is going to happen. Spike shoes are, are... I love spike shoes. They're one of my favorite items in the game. Uh, if you've got them... You're in good shape in the temple because you can jump on the mummy's heads as you just saw. Hopefully, if you ever get an opportunity to buy spike shoes or a compass, make sure you buy them. Always. Don't pass them up. Always on the second level of the temple, you have to find the golden door. So be very careful and look everywhere just like if you were playing. Now look at this. The range sometimes, you know, I thought it would shoot it, but I realized, you know what? It's not gone yet. He could have shot me and I went and went into the Tiki Spikes. That You have to think like this. If you start developing a pattern of thinking like this, then you will be very good at the game. You'll start getting more and more consistent. And that's what you're aiming for. If you're comfortable with the traps like I am here you know you want to get comfortable with these traps if you know how they move if you know what your limitations are then then you you'll, you can you can go through the game with no fear and that's what you're aiming for right you want to be you know comfortable with everything you see like oh I know how that's gonna react I better not move this way now the way I like to do the City of Gold, I'm not doing a money run or anything, I'm just trying to survive, but the first thing you want to do is locate where the exit is, because you want to deal with the shopkeeper first. The last thing you want is to have the shopkeeper deal, you know, kill you as you're running out with the Book of the Dead in hand. No, you want to kill the shopkeeper, so find the exit first before dealing with anything else. Find the shopkeeper. In this case, he was already dead, thank goodness, because you want to retrieve your shotgun you want your shotgun back. Now that you've used the staff, you want the shotgun back. You want a shotgun, especially for hell. Anything, if you go into hell without a weapon, you know, it's not going to be a good idea. Now, I don't like to kill Anubis in the city in the city of gold. I like to uh, just get the hell out of dodge here. First, you want to get the shotgun. So, try to remember this pattern. Deal with the shopkeeper first. Take his shotgun and then go back and get the Book of the Dead. As soon as you pick up the book, run. Just don't deal with anything. Just get out of there. Now, as soon as uh, you're able to control your character, he will spawn behind you, Anubis. Make sure to throw two bombs straight away at him. Don't waste any time. Make sure you throw two bombs at him to take him out and wait till he fully spawns there you go
Now, I make a lot of bad mistakes in this fight, and, and it started lagging really bad, so I, I have to apologize ahead of time, like I said. In fact, you're probably going to have to see a lot of frame rates missing, or like frames missing, because I had to stop playing before, so the frame rate would settle down. So I apologize ahead of time, but I, I did make a lot of mistakes here. I couldn't seem to get up on top. I was looking for items. I thought he was going to crush me here. I got lucky a lot in this run. But um, try not to make the mistakes that I make here, and it's starting to lag already really bad. If you've made it this far, don't take any chances. You don't want to do it the hard way, the way I showed you in the temple video. That's for a speed run. To do it the safe way, you want to make a bomb. You want to use bombs to kill it, to, to make a path for him to go to. And he won't bother you if you can get him over to the side. And this is where it stopped, started lagging so bad I had to stop, I think, coming up. Yeah, I had to stop here. And continue where I... Yeah, I had to continue. It was just really unplayable. Like, I couldn't even play. And I definitely didn't want to record like that. I think it started settling down here. But you want to get Almac to one side and get him out of your way. Again, it must have lagged again. I apologize ahead of time, like I said. It was just so horrible. So, you have to watch the Book of the Dead. When he starts laughing extremely fast, you know that's where the hell entrance is. You have to get Olmec over the entrance. And you have a very small window of opportunity to enter the door. I have had many times where I couldn't enter the door. It's very frustrating when you've made it this far. And and, and getting this, this hole just right is somewhat of a... Uh, it takes some, some practice because I still haven't got it right sometimes. You'll see that I make some mistakes and I had to go back and make a few other adjustments to the hole but what you don't want is for him to miss the door his width needs to be where you can get on his head and, and into the door if you make it to where he's off to the right or left you, you're not gonna do it and, and it's so frustrating so make sure that you bomb the right way make it to where you know if he hits hits it he's only gonna go into a gap that's, that's small enough to get into that door Once you think your hole's big enough, then lure him away, lure him to the hole. But I make a mistake here. I didn't bomb enough, as you can see. So I have to make an adjustment. And he still won't go in. You know how frustrating it is <laughs> to get so close. Now he's in. Make sure you get right in front of the door and hit R spam that right bumper as fast as you can. Now you've entered hell. The fun's just starting. You have to be extremely careful in hell. You do not want to make any mistakes. And I'm sorry it lagged again here really bad. You'll notice when it just became too much for me to handle. Now it's up to you if you want to kill Vlad and get his cape and get his amulet. Now if you get his amulet, you can walk into fire and it won't hurt you. Swim in lava pools, but is in this case, I just like to get to the damn exit as fast as I can in hell. I don't like to mess around in hell. Um, because you got the shopkeepers to deal with too, and it's always something you need a lot of time to deal with sometimes. But always plan ahead. Always plan ahead for the shopkeepers. As you can see... At the last level of hell, I get really, really nervous because the, the last shopkeeper was really, really in my way. And he almost got me, but not quite. Watch out for vampires. Take your time. Deal with them accordingly. If you can get a cape, that would be great. I do manage to get one later. It's starting to lag again. I can't say I'm sorry enough. It was just such a bad... I don't know what happened. I don't like dealing with these traps. Uh, destroy them 
if you don't feel comfortable. I did. It's better to just make yourself comfortable in hell because you just don't know what you're going to deal with. Those, those traps are nothing to be messed with. Just get rid of them so your run will be smoother. Kill the vampire and get his cape. That's, that's important. You want to have some kind of a good maneuverable item in, the, in hell because it just makes it easier. Shopkeeper. Now what I like to do a lot of times if he, if he just can't, if I don't think he's going to die, I'll bomb right above the door in a lot of cases if I just realize I'm not gonna have a chance to deal with him and then I'll just make a run for it just kinda just wait until you think you can make it drop down and get out get the hell out of there you don't always have to kill the shopkeepers If something makes you feel uncomfortable, that tiki trap just wasn't doing it for me. In addition to that uh, swinging trap, I just had to get rid of it. The thing is, that's why you want a lot of bombs, and I'm kind of low on bombs. But you just still, you want bombs in this game. That is the most important thing to build up. I'm sure a lot of Spunky players will tell you bombs are just absolutely critical. This shopkeeper made me very, very nervous. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, if you, you just can't get rid of them, uh, they're too tight of a space. In this situation, I like to jump on their heads. Um, but the cape kind of made it awkward at this situation. He almost gets me. I still don't know how I survived this encounter. Right there, look at that. I, I should have died. It, something tells me I should have died there, but it, f fate was on my side that time. The final boss is extremely easy. If you do what I do in this video, you should never die in this fight. If you die in this fight, it's your own fault. Don't use bombs if you have a shotgun because you don't want to bomb, possibly bomb a hole and not get the items here that they drop. They drop boxes of bombs, which you'll want. Now, the first thing you want to do, hopefully you have ropes because you don't want to, you want at least one rope for this fight. You need at least one rope to be safe. Deal with the bats that are and the vampires that are hanging about first because you definitely do not want to get hit at this juncture. And it lags again here. I just had to stop. Alright, here we go back again. Now, there's a safe spot that uh, you cannot be hurt and it's very important to get to it. Let's deal with this guy here. Right here it's always going to be in the same spot. Throw a rope right here. Right here. If you have a shotgun, you can even see his fist off screen. Just shoot it a couple of times. And and once you see his head, just spam as many bombs as you can. He's dead. Now, you have to be wary. There are vampires up top still. I don't mess with any money. I didn't want any money. This was not the purpose of this run. But yeah, just get to the exit. There are vampires. Be wary. And there you go. Hell is done. I do apologize again. I, I don't know what happened with the recording, but uh, it's just quite embarrassing to be honest, but I had no, no power over the matter. I might do another one in the future, but let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this, this helped you guys out. Getting to hell isn't as hard as, as it's made out to be. If you do the right things and make do a little bit of practicing on the on the levels first with the shortcuts, then you'll your skills will start to build. You get into good habits and good thinking, and that's where you'll you'll start to really get consistent in this game. I'll see you guys next time.